I'm Laura Mize, pediatric speech language pathologist, and welcome to Teach Me to Talk's Therapy Tip of the Week. Over the past few months, I've come up with a really great way to organize my toys, not only so that I can group them all together and have them when I need them and be super organized, but so that I can be super efficient when I'm working on a particular skill set or a specific goal with a child. Now, I think this idea is fabulous, not only for therapists who you want to pull everything together so that you can use it with a particular child week after week, or maybe for multiple children who are working on really similar goals. It's also great for busy parents at home who want to work on things with your child but you never seem to quite have what you need to be able to do it and you have to go here and go here and it just interrupts the whole flow so it will probably be a good idea if you are in that situation to make what I have started to call copy kits. Now what's a copy kit? A copy kit is a bag or a box or a basket or any kind of uh, you know purse that you want to use to pull together all the toys and materials that you're going to need to work with that particular child or on that particular goal or skill that you're trying to teach a child. Now I like this idea so much that I've put together little sets, little copy kits for every therapy manual and practical every podcast series that we have here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to look out for all those Therapy Tip of the Week uh, videos. Today we're going to be talking about Stage 2 from my Stages of Play podcast series, and that Stages of Play in Toddlers and Preschoolers with Language Delays. And we're going to be looking at that, and this is from show number or course number 467. So if you want a more detailed explanation or, uh, again, a real script to use to play with these toys and then more examples be sure to check out that show and that link is right here below on YouTube I'll also be including all the links for all the cool toys that I'm about to show you so let's talk about what's going on during stage 2 non-functional play from stages of play so the age range here developmentally is from 8 months to about 12 months so that very end of a baby's first year of life now we know that our little friends with language delays who are older babies or toddlers or even our little friends who are preschoolers with really significant developmental delays may still be in this developmental period between eight months and 12 months and so again it doesn't matter really the chronological age we have to look at the developmental age and so we always want to be sure that we are meeting children right where they are when we start to work with them for therapy and sometimes uh, we get ahead of ourselves so for a child who's in this eight uh, to 12 month developmental range we know the things that they are really really working on with play would be learning to use items more intentionally and so we know back in stage one that children were primary explorers and so they used their senses like what they could see and what they could hear and primarily what they could mouth to explore toys here at stage two we're at that next little developmental rung where they start to do things more than just look at a toy or stick it straight in their mouths they start to really learn how to handle it more appropriately they have developed a little more fine motor control so that they can do some of the really simple actions that I'm going to show you today uh, here with these toys so let's take a look now at my recommended toy picks for stage two all right the first thing that I want to show you well first before we get to the toys let me say one thing about the bag don't let the bag go unused. You can really, really use your bag or your basket or your box to create excitement so that when you bring it out, a child knows, boy, this is going to be fun. This is something we don't normally do. And let me just say for those of you who are parents at home, you may want to put these toys away so that when you bring them out, uh, again, it's a really fun experience for the child. They're a little bit more motivated to play. And then after you've had some time to practice with them, you can leave them out. But again, put these or another set up. Rotating toys toys is a really really important way that parents and therapists can always uh, keep play sessions new with children if they don't have full access to all the toys that you'll be using it'll be a little bit more special when you bring these out all right so create anticipation with your bag and get some kind of little routine going so that you bring it out and you're saying the same thing every time you might say something like oh what's in my bag look look I have some things for us to play what do you think it is let's see see let's see look look and then bring out your first toy always be sure that you are creating anticipation not only with your 
with your toys there, but with you, with your facial expressions, with your body language, you're leaning forward. Again, that anticipatory posture so that you're drawing a child into play with you. And so another thing that we've talked about back in our podcast series with Stages of Play uh, would be linking the language skills that a child is also acquiring at the same time. So here between eight and 12 months, children are really learning how to listen. They're learning how to tune into your words and they are just beginning to start to associate what you do and what you say with very specific things. And so we can help children make those connections and link meanings with words by being really repetitive when we talk and using the same kinds of keywords over and over and over to teach a child, again, what those words mean. Now, children here at 8 to 12 months are vocalizing a little bit, and we may hear some first words toward the end of this period. But again, our intention right here with a child who's in stage two should not be in getting him to really imitate these words just yet. He's just not quite there. Our intention should be helping him learn what words mean by being super repetitive and then helping him learn how to play with the toy. And, and these are really simple toys here at stage two. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, let me say one more thing. Another thing that's going on here at stage two is that children are really mastering four very important cognitive concepts that they will use the entire rest of their lives. They're learning about object permanence. And as we uh, review a toy, we'll talk about what cognitive concept that we're teaching a child and helping a child learn as we uh, use the toy. So for this one, this is called a Montessori object permanence box. And so you have the first cognitive concept there with object permanence. And what object permanence means is that a child understands, even though I can't see See it, it still exists. And so we teach that with a little box like this where the object is just uh, visually obstructed just for a second or so. And so the goal here is just for the baby to take the ball and put it in the hole that's here on top and then it slides out. And again, such a, such a short little time for them not to be able to see the ball here in the house and then they see it again. And it teaches them to look for the ball and again, that's how they learn object permanence. Now your keyword here is ball. So you're going to need to say ball a lot as you play to help that child eventually be able to say that word. But before he can say that word, he has to understand that word. So be sure that you're saying something like, and I'm going to model it here for you now, and listen to how many times I say the word ball, because this is how repetitive we need to be for a child with language delays to learn what the word means and then eventually be able to say the word. So you would say something like, oh, look at the ball. See my ball? Look at this ball. Watch watch the ball ball goes in oh oh where is it a ball there's that ball so look that's like seven or eight times that i modeled that word even just within that few second period now you don't need to go that fast i'm just going quickly here for the sake of modeling that for you but i want you to understand just how repetitive you need to be I call this high intensity modeling, and I'm going to be talking about it a lot in my upcoming therapy manual, the Late Talker Workbook, uh, which will be released in the fall of 2023. So if it's past that time, please check that book out if you are working with a Late Talker. All right, so that's our first toy. It's the story object permanence box. The next cognitive concept that we want to talk about is called means to an end. And I have this darling snail uh, pull toy. And again, what does means to an end mean? It means that a child learns that I can do something and accomplish my goal. So here, uh, a pull toy is a great example of a means to an end toy because a child learns, hey, if I want this toy to roll, I've got to pull this uh, string here. So that's how a child would learn that. This is a super cool toy because it also doubles as a shape sorter with two different difficulty levels. And I just, I adore this toy because of that. And so on this side, you just have a little string here. And so for the shape sorter component of this, all the child has to do is get it on one side of the string and the string easily moves over. And so you can see a baby here, even less than a, a year old or a baby who's older than that, but developmentally still, at this, still here at this phase uh, can do this. Now the other side is a traditional shape sorter with a circle, a square, and a triangle right there. So you'll get a lot of mileage out of this toy. And I think it's just adorable too. I love these wooden toys. Uh, let's take a look at the other toys that I have here in our copy kit 
it for stage two for non-functional play. Here's um, a book, a cloth book uh, from Goodnight Moon, so the cloth version of that. So lots of things for a child to see here and certainly things for him to hear. We talked about this in stage one back in show 466 with exploratory play. And you can take a look at the therapy tip of the week uh, video associated with that podcast to really get a good idea of how children process information in that um, developmental period. But certainly this kind of book would be fabulous for a kid who's in stage two, because what do we want a child to do with a book? We want him to learn how to turn the pages and look at the pictures. So those would be your goal uh, for any book, and certainly a little cloth book or any other kind of touch and feel book there. Another uh, cool toy that I have here in the copy kit for stage two are these great push cars. And so remember we said in stage two that we're teaching a child to do just that next little level of play where they start start to be able to perform simple actions to activate toys. So here at stage two, a child may not be able to completely independently push these cars and make them go on their own, but you want them understanding and being interested in how the toy works. And so showing them, look, I push, ready, set, go! And so they can watch the car move across the floor or move across the table and then take their little hands and help them do it. And that's how they're going to learn how to be more appropriate with toys and how to use them for the way they're intended. And that's actually in stage three. And you can check out the therapy tip of the week for that as well as the podcast for that with show 468. All right, the next set of toys here would be a set of nesting cups. Now you can certainly do it with uh, nesting blocks of graduated sizes like I have in the background here. Anything where a child is first learning about size. Now I love this set of cups because these are perfect for water play because there are holes in the bottom and so you can really uh, use these in the bathtub or the baby pool or even as a therapist using a plastic container like a Rubbermaid and filling it with water and using it uh, for water play with a kid. And so again these cups are going to be super for that. And here at stage two they're not really going to be able to stack all that purposefully yet. That's going to come later in stage three, but you can certainly start to introduce these play routines. And anytime we stack something up, what's the natural expectation that a toddler's going to want to do? He's going to want to knock it over. So develop some really routines like saying your key words up, 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 up as you build. And then as you knock it down, you can count or, you know, say ready, set, go or something like, uh, you know, they all fall down as you knock those cups over and encourage the child um, to want to do that too. All right, so let's take a look at what else we have here for stage two in the copy kit. A soft doll is a great little toy to have throughout a toddlerhood. And the concept that we want to teach here is like we talked about with our object permanence box. And so hiding the doll with a cloth or a blanket or anything where you're helping a child learn just because I can't see that doll, just because she's covered up, doesn't mean that she's disappeared. And so you play a game of peekaboo with the doll to really uh, introduce that concept of object permanence. Um, I also want to show you some little uh, spinner toys that I have here at stage two. And I think these are perfect for kids who are just learning how to use their little hands and manipulate toys. These toys have suction cups on them, so they're great for, say, a sliding glass door or a window. They're also perfect for the bathtub. And again, super easy for a child to activate just to get their little uh, fingers on there and just a little bit of pressure and that's going to spin. So a great way to accomplish what we're looking for here at stage two in teaching children to do things more purposefully with their little hands. I also have a really cool uh, Montessori set that I want to show you. And again, why are we calling it a Montessori set? That's just a preschool approach where they really emphasize naturalistic materials like wooden toys. So this is a great wooden rattle set. You can use this for container play that I talk about a lot in shows 467 as well as in shows 466. And so if you don't have container play going with a child who's in the stage two, I would encourage you to do that by, again, making a copy kit or just using a bowl or something like that where a child has a container and he can bring the items out one at a time, explore them, and then also use it for that 
fill and dump activity, which is so important and such a big uh, play routine for children throughout toddlerhood. So this set is a great one. And again, all the links are below. There's a, a bell here, a little disc toy, which is perfect for stage one and stage two where children learn how to transfer toys from hand to hand. And this toy makes it simple because again, it's easy for children to be able to manipulate with their little hands that aren't as quite as coordinated yet. So other kinds of things that you can put here in your copy kit. Um, you can already hear an electronic toy, so we'll just talk about that next. Any kind of electronic toy, a child in stage one, two, three, and well beyond, uh, a child will be drawn to that because of the lights and, and because of the sounds. But we want to give children an opportunity to learn how to play with toys beyond pushing a button to hear some music or see some lights. But <laughs> pushing buttons is an important action that we want to teach toddlers and babies to be able to do, certainly here at stage two. So use electronic toys. I really use electronic toys as, uh, you know, to teach cause and effect. You know, I push the button and something happens. And we certainly can continue to use that with teaching object permanence. If a child with significant developmental delays needs further cues, they can certainly hear the music or see the lights, even though the toy is covered up. And so they're going to learn how to do that better. And that would be an additional cue if you need that. My last toy here is a great toy for again teaching a new simple action which would be pull and this is a great teething toy and certainly that is uh, something that we're going to need for children who are uh, chronologically here in that 8 to 12 month period and beyond as teething is a big deal and we can certainly give children uh, toys to be able to relieve that pain and again use that primary level of exploration but here at level at stage two we really want kids doing more than mouthing even though that is uh, still developmentally okay until they're about 24 months old all right that was it i showed you all the toys that i have in my stage two copy kit if you want to make a copy kit like that be sure to check out the links here below on youtube uh, for amazon that you can get the links to all these toys and also check out the longer version of this material in show number 467 where I walk you through all the play skills and language skills that children are developing here at stage two. All right, that's it for today. I'm Laura Mize, pediatric speech language pathologist, and thank you so much for joining me for Teach Me to Talk's Therapy Tip of the Week.